Last month, the US Air Force disclosed what it was up to in a startling piece of news. They modified a 2,000-pound satellite-guided JDAM bomb and used it from an F-15E Strike Eagle against moving ships. If the test results yield a larger number of platforms being modified, the US military could suddenly find itself having an arsenal of some 300,000 JDAMs capable of engaging moving ships. That could be a true game-changer. JDAM bombs offer surgical precision, but do you know what else offers the same? Manscaped men's grooming products. Yeah, this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. They've been kind enough to give Commissar their new Performance Package 4.0 bundle, the crown of which is the new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. I got no hands, so I got a helping hand. Say hi, hand. The trimmer comes with a LED light, a travel lock, and it uses a cool wireless charging system. But there's more stuff in the package. This here is the Weed Whacker. Those damn nose and ear hairs just keep cropping up as you get older. Definitely useful. Finally, the Crop Preserver Ball deodorant can help you if you really want to up your game with the ladies. While Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray with Aloe Vera will cool you off. So for a limited time, Binko viewers can get all this. Plus two free gifts. Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs and the Shed Travel Bag. You can also enroll in their peak hygiene plan for ongoing replenishments, delivered straight to your door. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off, the two free gifts and free international shipping. Oh! Just use the promo code BINKOF20. Your whole body, balls included, will thank you. Let us get back to our JDAMs. The tests in question were performed in late August over the Gulf of Mexico. The goal, to paraphrase the Air Force, was to test the viability of employing new air-delivered munitions against ships. These tests were part of the larger program, called the QuickSync. Again, in the words of the Air Force, its goal is to develop a low-cost method of achieving torpedo-like seaworthy kills from the air. QuickSync is managed by the Air Force Research Laboratory, and the F-15Es used are the part of the 85th Test and Evaluation Squadron so it's all still a bit away from everyday mass usage. Similar quicksync tests were done in 2020 as well, but with B-52 bombers dropping the JDAMs. The most recent test shows the effort is indeed ongoing. It also shows the desire to expand the capability to a much larger number of delivery platforms. Now, how does it all work? That part was not disclosed. Basic JDAM is usually a fairly cheap bomb kit which adds guidance via inertial and satellite navigation, which usually means that the plane inputs coordinates into the bomb before it releases it. JDAMs are used on static targets, so current regular JDAMs can't really target moving ships. The precision against moving ships would simply be inadequate, as the bomb needs roughly one minute to drop from high altitude to the surface. During that time, the ship could change course and its position, so a bomb that's not being redirected after it's been released would most likely miss. There is no info available on just how the JDAMs were modified or how they were used in the test. Some JDAM bomb kits also have laser guidance, but it's unlikely those have been used in the test. The photos that the US Air Force released accompanying the news about the tests show an unmodified basic JDAM kit. There was no added guidance system. The fuse was also missing on the bombs but that's not strange for a test. To measure precision better, an inert bomb hit is preferred, rather than having a warhead blast everything. Furthermore, Major Swanson of the unit that participated in the test stated, for any large moving ship, the Air Force primary weapon is the 2,000-pound laser-guided GBU-24. Not only is this weapon less than ideal, it also reduces our survivability based on how it must be employed. This munition can change that. Laser guidance needs skies clear of clouds and enemy smoke cover. Plus, there has to be a plane nearby, illuminating the target ship with the laser. Such a plane would be in greater danger of being shot down than a plane simply releasing bombs. So how was the guidance achieved? Binkov can guess. And the key to the guess is actually based on similar old JDAM tests. Back in the mid-2000s, there was a US program called AMSTI, Affordable Moving Surface Target Engagement. It involved JDAMs and similar weapons 
hitting moving ships and tanks using sort of a command guidance. JDAMs were modified so they could receive and interpret data from aircraft while in flight. That's basically similar to how they receive satellite data anyway. The difference is, JDAM usually just uses the data from the GPS satellites to determine where it is, and then changes its course accordingly. In those tests, however, incoming data was basically new coordinates to the bomb, so the bomb could know where to change course. But even though the results of the tests were great, with targets hit, and even though initially the Air Force had decided to procure the AMSTI capability, with a goal set to gain such JDAMs by 2010, all those plans fell apart. By 2007, the whole plan was called off. Judy Stokely, Air Force program official, said the test took as many as three different aerial platforms, so JDAMs could hit a moving target. Demands to make the whole idea work were too great. The Air Force lacked enough appropriate platforms back then. Eventually, it was decided it's not worth the effort. Notably, Northrop Grumman spokesman said at the time that they still think the technology is viable and that they would continue to work with the Air Force. The thing is, for such targeting to work, the target must be observed via an airborne radar with ground-moving target indication modes. Back then, such systems were used by E-8 Joint Stars planes. Those are huge planes and the US has only 16 of those, with most of those usually needed for different missions. In the Gulf War, those planes surveyed the battlefield and looked for Iraqi armor formations. Basically, one big and expensive plane had to track the target, another plane had to release the bomb, and yet a different plane was a communications platform between all the components. But even back then, it was known that the future F-35 would bring similar radar mode and ability all in one package. So fast forward to 2021. The F-15E used for the test, even though it's not an F-35, does have brand new systems. It's been modernized and it sports a radar using F-35's radar tech. It's a modern active array radar, which can perform multiple functions. It can both track a moving target precisely and it can be used as a communications array. Of course, the F-15E itself can also drop the bombs. Suddenly, what required three planes 17 years ago, including some big pricey aircraft, today requires a single tactical platform, which, once the F-15C gets replaced by the F-15EX, will be available in the hundreds. And if one counts the F-35s with similar abilities, the fleet with said capability may even reach 2,000 planes. Of course, simply releasing the bomb and guiding it to target may not result in a hit. Bombs do tend to fall in mostly predictable patterns and are, at best, transonic. So depending on what kind of a ship is the target, some bombs may get intercepted. But would at least some get through? Gun-based ship defenses can hope to hit targets some two or three miles away. They need to spend a few seconds laying down a hail of bullets per bomb. They need time to adjust to the next target. Realistically, a single gun would be able to engage perhaps several such bombs. Most frigate and destroyer ships today use one or two such guns. Missile-based defenses could be more effective, engaging bombs from 5 miles or even 50 miles away, in theory. But such missiles are expensive. Even the cheapest ones, like the small US RAM, still cost something like 40 times more than a JDAM-type weapon. The Chinese equivalent, HQ-10, even though cheap due to lower production costs, would still likely be 10 times more expensive. A lot of Chinese ships do have long-range air defenses, of course. Those ships wouldn't be the primary target of a basic GBU-31 attack that the recent test involved, as the planes carrying such bombs would get shot down before releasing the bombs. The bomb has a decent nominal range, but the course corrections would eat into it a bit. Still, the practical reach of over 10 nautical miles for a high-altitude launch would be likely. A low-altitude bomb toss would be even more dangerous for the plane, as it would have to be done from just a few miles away. Basic, very cheap bombs like those would have to be used against ships that lack long-range air defenses. But there are plenty of those. For example, out of 86 Russian combat or assault ships of 1,000-ton displacement, only 13 have air defenses that can reach over 10 miles away. 
the Chinese are somewhat better. Of 212 ships, 69 could engage the planes carrying those bombs. But that's still a lot of ships lacking protection. And these lists did not count in various other ships, like supply ones. The F-15Es were tested with four bombs, though if range permits they could hold more. But even at four, a single typical attack force of a dozen planes can deliver 48 bombs onto a single ship. And there aren't that many ships that could defend from a 48-bomb salvo, especially if it comes from several directions. Of course, tests like these are just the beginning. Even back in the 2000s, a JSO was tested alongside JDAMs. A JSO is basically a JDAM with wings, for a much longer range. In the very near future, small diameter bombs could also be modified. While more expensive than JDAMs, they're still quite cheap. And while such winged bombs would be slower and would give the defender more time, meaning more of those could be intercepted, they're so small that many more could be carried by a single F-15. Here we can see one F-15 carrying as many as 20 such bombs, while retaining most of its external fuel load. That's potentially as many as 240 bombs in a 12-plane strike package. Having many bombs in the air at once would be quite possible because the bombs wouldn't be individually guided. Each bomb would receive the very same signal, just feeding it coordinates of where the ship is each second. The computer on the bomb itself would calculate the difference from its own position via GPS signals and the target position, fed via the plane. Enemy ships might face the issue of a limited number of interceptor missiles. The Chinese O-52 D-type destroyer, for example, has 24 small HQ-10 missiles, two gun defense systems and 64 big VLS cells. Those house missiles that are so expensive that it would usually be a waste to have them engage winged JDAMs or small diameter bombs. If they would have to do it to survive and waste most of said missiles stopping just one bomb salvo, the ships may as well return to base for rearming. Their mission would be cancelled and there would be one fewer ship in the area. So the technology has evidently matured, and very soon these new anti-shipping methods could usher in a new era where surface ships would need to protect themselves from swarms of low-cost attacks, instead of just hundreds of planes using a stock of a few tens of thousands of expensive anti-ship weapons, the US may be able to use its entire tactical aviation fleet to use the entire JDAM stock against ships, on the cheap. Right now, the US has roughly 300,000 simple and cheap JDAM and SDB bombs. This new technology could indeed be a game changer. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together. <laughs>